Hey everybody, it's Dr. Meatberry here. And in this video, I'm gonna go over like, what would you put into a general lesson plan template? Um, specifically around reading comprehension, whether you're focusing on a comprehension strategy instruction or text-based analysis or a, or a text-based discussion. Um, how would you fit that into a lesson plan? And the lesson plans that I use with when I'm training um, teachers or educators or even in the, um, the corporate world, it's the same because I want my graduate students, most of you who have jobs at a school when they might have a lesson plan template you have to use. So you don't have to use Southern's, you can use Southern's template. Um, it includes everything in a lesson plan element that I'm going to go over. Um, and it's just, these are the elements that I would expect to see in a lesson plan. And we're gonna do that through the lens of thinking about reading comprehension as I discuss the different elements. Now, really, I mean, first it's simple, just the title. Just tell me the title and give me a goal. Now, sometimes a goal isn't simple. Um, a goal is different than an objective. Uh, a goal might be, you know, something that you can't really measure. Like think about like reading motivation. You know, that's that's something very hard to measure and teach, but that can be part that can be part of a goal. Or or if you are just having them, you know, a goal could be focusing on those things like dispositions. You know, we talk about reading comprehension, that there's skills, the things that you do to automaticity, strategy, the things that take uh, planning and understanding and monitoring monitoring of that understanding those are strategies but then there's those dispositions those things that build up over time and that's you know the kinds of things you could have in your goals talking about building um building students into lifelong readers who discuss their texts or so you know so those are it's the bigger picture goal that you have um and that's different than your um objective but before we get to the objective i like to move on to um first you know Where's the common core state standard that you're teaching using? Now, a lesson may cover multiple standards. Remember, they're, they're connected, they're grade level expectations. So it's not, you don't cover one standard per lesson, but you might be drawing your, your objectives and your assessments from one standard. You don't want to conflate your measurement by trying to cover too many standards at once. You teach basically one or two things. So even if you're gonna cover multiple standards, even if you list which ones you're gonna cover, your objectives would get driven and unpacked from those common court state standards. And if you'll remember back in our last video, we really went over how you can divide it between the knowledge and the skills and identify those key levers between grades and use those as the things that you're gonna assess. Find evidence of knowledge growth of those knowledge and skills that are those um, key anchors, those key differences between grade levels. And that's how you can craft your objectives from your common core state standards. So as a review, it went, you had your goal, um, you had your goal, um, your common core state standards, and now your objectives. Um, up next, this is something that I require in lesson plans, is a research to practice connection. I want to know that what you're going to do has been tried or is based on accepted theory. So if you're doing a class-based discussion technique, find me some research that shows that that technique works or find me some research that says, you know, um, that is based on those kinds of theories. Like if you take taking James Bruner and scaffolding, you could say, well, I'm, I'm using these worksheets as a scaffold based on the learning theories of, you know, Bruner. Um, but really, the best place to do is, is look to um, like magazines like uh, Research Teaching, uh, Research Teaching, uh, Reading Teacher Journal for Adolescent and Adult Literature, um, the Elementary School Journal, um, the English Journal. All of the all of those teaching uh, research to practice journals, oftentimes that your professor may assign in a class, you can find the research practice connection there. Uh, Rewrite uh, what. I think it's readwrite.org. They do a really good job of um, showing that. Um, but that's the next element. And I really think it's important. Like, I want you to know why you're doing what you're doing. And then, of course, the attribution. Most of you folks are Googling and searching for things online. And you have to wonder, you know, 
that's okay. You're not, there's, you want to be able to learn from the experts. It's the same way we teach reading. We teach people to look at mentor tests. Um, so you're going to have questions, you're going to Google, and you're going to search. Just make sure you provide attribution um, for the, if you use somebody else's ideas. Now, we have talked about how two ways to improve your searches is to always add the term minus teachers pay teachers. And minus Pinterest to improve, improve your search results. Now, Pinterest does have some amazing teaching communities. Um, you just have to curate your pins and be involved in those teaching communities. I'm just not. I just find that what they surface organically from searching isn't good. And if you add these search, Boolean search terms, it's the same search for everything but anything with teachers pay teachers and anything from Pinterest well, that mentions them. Um, that will just improve your search results. But make sure you attribute, you know, you model what you want your, your, your students to do. You want them to use text-based evidence and, and prove where they got that evidence from. That's called an attribution, a citation. Then you have your overall instructional plan. All right, and um, again, you can use whatever lesson plan. These all, like all of these elements will be in those lesson plans, except maybe the attribution and the research practice. That's something that I truly want to hammer home. Um, but when you're looking at your instructional plan, you know, tell me, you know, the materials you need and then the sets. And oftentimes, you know, in reading comprehension, this will involve explicit um, instruction. So you will have steps that involve, you know, explicitly defined. Now, this is only one model of direct instruction, but it's very common and effective, especially in, you'll see it in the comprehension strategy instructions. We've seen it in our, our mini lessons, um, independent practice, and guided practice. So those are my elements for steps. If you're thinking in, um, if you're using an explicit systematic instructional model, say for phonics or comprehension strategy instruction, and you'll find those models very common in the reading classroom. Yeah. Up next comes the assessment. Now, here's the thing with assessment. This is where I go second. So while I'm going down as a text, when I'm writing a lesson plan, when I'm grading a lesson, or sorry, when I'm providing feedback on a lesson plan, I go from objectives to assessment. Because I want to know first, what do you want to measure? In your, what, what change are you looking for in your students, and how do you measure that? And if those two things aren't connected, your entire lesson plan is just borked. It's not going to work. So you have to be able to, your assessment needs to elicit evidence that can be used to justify that that student did or did not make growth against the objective. And then finally, I have our section for differentiation. Now, in my classes, um, I'm going to do this slightly different than, say, in your special education classes. You folks learn a lot about differentiating based on um, 504 plans, based on IEP plans, um, and thinking about different uh, ways that we support students with um, identified needs. But Diversity comes in many ways, and that is cognitive diversity. And you know, it's not just it's not just the, the cognitive diversity of, of our students who are identified for extra services or those who are identified for enrichment. You know, there's a vast difference of the mid middle. And what we do with differentiation there in my classes is I want you to think about at grade level or below grade level in, based on content knowledge. So when you're writing your differentiation section for, for my literacy classes, because we are trying to learn how literacy assessment works and how we can use that the formative and, and summative assessments as data to help our students grow. Um, what you do when you differentiate is I want somebody who's above grade level and someone who's below grade level. And what you go to back to the common core state standards. What, how would you support them if they didn't, you know, that means that they didn't reach that point 
last year. So what can you do in an inclusive classroom so that student isn't getting lesser than or more, but just additional supports if they're either below level, grade level or above grade level? And so that is how I want to look at differentiation um, based on, uh, on the, what the difference that your students have just in the everyday life of their classroom. So if we go through those parts one more time of what is in a lesson plan, it is lesson plan title. Right, then you have your goal. Then the common core state standard. Then the objective. Now here, when you're writing, I would jump to assessment, but I'm going down the list. The research to practice. Right, then your attribution. Citation. Have your instructional plan, which is then broken down into material steps. And then your assessment and differentiation. Now, as long as a lesson plan has these elements, I'm okay with it. It's compliant to me. It can be, and these can be in any school district's um, template. It can be in the Southern Connecticut State University's, my university template. It can be in your university's template. The key goal that I add is this research to practice section. I add that um, because I think that's really critical to draw in that focus that you are using an instructional routine that other teachers have tried and said, yes, this works. And other people have followed up and said, yes, I tried that too, and it does work. There might even be statistical data that prove it does work. Or there could be piles of great qualitative case studies that prove it does work. So um, I want you to really be thinking about that. And it's also, many of you, that's how we learn to grow, by reading the stuff that other master teachers read. It's how we become better educators. And that's it. That's the step for formulating a lesson plan.